Hello and welcome back to yet another replay review. Today, looking at a replay from Indiana, from Canada. Been playing Halo for about five years. The game type is Oddball on Haven, and a description of what isn't working within the replay. I'm extremely new to Halo 4 like everyone else, so I'm wondering if you see anything wrong with my gameplay that I can't see. Please be extremely critical. Gamertag marks with V3, and then again, it is an oddball gameplay. So thank you for the submission, Indiana. I'll be calling you Marksman throughout the gameplay. This is a really rad gameplay. It's five minutes, which is short, sweet. It's an oddball, obviously, and they end up winning. Spoiler alert, no big deal, right? I love the decision to run off the break and get the sticky detonator. Not much to talk about here in the first uh, minute or two because it is a 2v4 here in just a second. You'll see one of the guys lag out while others are joining in. And as they do that, I can let you know about the new format and being sick and all this lovely stuff that I'm sure you're just dying to hear about, right? Right? Yes. So, this is a new format. It's a lot like the Reach Replay Review series. Personally, I preferred the longer format of the the X-Split ones that I was doing, the, the first three Halo 4 videos. But you all spoke out to me, said you wanted something else. By the way, I don't know why you have Scattershot and Oddball. That's a bad combo. Let one of your teammates who doesn't have a power weapon... Take that bad boy, but it doesn't matter because the other team's joining in right now anyway. So, nitpicky, nitpicky, right? Yes, that's what I'm here to do. I kind of prefer the other format, but you all spoke out, so we'll go back to this format, and that's all good, and let me know if you enjoy it better. It takes a little bit more effort for me and a little bit more time, so that just means uh, less frequency of these replay reviews coming out. But, hey, you trade one for another, right? Also, been sick. You can probably hear it in my voice. Uh... Just, of course, it's finals time, right? Always have to be uh, getting sick around finals. Check out this sick double kill right here. He does not panic. He just looks. He pops. He pulls back. I don't know how it didn't kill him, but he did very well. Not dying here. And we're going to bust right into talking about the gameplay. Marksman V3 does a really good job. I can't be overly critical because this game works out in his favor very in a very large manner. Check this out. PV being used for that sick first shot advantage. I'll explain that in just a second. Sit down, your reach in means nothing, son. So Promethean Vision is really cool to know where your opponents are, but it's a huge asset in gunfights because when you're behind cover, Marksman's going to get one shot here. He's going to go behind the cover, and then he's going to be like, hmm, pop on that PV, Promethean Vision. That's the cool way to say it, all the cool kids, the PV, yo. This allows you to get your reticle or crosshairs already set up to where that guy's going to be. That way you get the first shot advantage when you do begin gunfighting and engaging with him. You know, instead of backing down like that dude should have, he pulls out into the Promethean Vision's line of sight, allowing Marksman to get the first shot advantage. I have a Promethean Vision class that I use, but I really only use it in Regicide. I feel like in game types like Oddball, it's really quite easy to coordinate and stick together as a team, and I don't really need to be overly aware of where others are on the map. Now, for other players, this is different. I think the radar in Halo 4, with how big it is and just how descriptive it is, gives you almost as much information as Promethean Vision can. But at the same time, Promethean Vision gives you that first shot advantage that I just mentioned, where if you're in a gunfight with somebody, you go behind a wall, he goes behind a wall, all you have to do is turn on Promethean Vision, and you'll know exactly when he's going to pop out and try and engage with you. That gives you a huge advantage if you can get the first shot off in the gunfight. Halo 4 really comes down to how good is your shot in an individual engagement? How quickly can you get on target? Are you getting your first shot ready? Did you see how he used that to already have his crosshairs lined up on the opponent before he got out there? It's a very cool and smart way to use Promethean Vision. I'd like to see more of you using it. Uh, but also, Marksman, remember, in Oddball... You don't always need to be running Promethean Vision. If there is the opportunity, check out this way he handles this. Very smart. They did not pay attention. I think it was a great last-ditch last effort there. And ends up getting three kills out of that whole ordeal. Very well played. He's feeling strong. Gets the, the fourth for the assist. And it's just well played. Uh, something I point out in all my replay reviews is when people miss the power weapons on the map. There's the scatter shot. We are going to continue to miss this scatter shot throughout most of the gameplay this is the biggest critique i have right here is this like 30 second period we're looking at where you miss the scatter shot um you basically stay in blue tunnel the whole game with your teammate defending the ball which is fine you win which is great 
But look at that unused scatter shot that's still on the floor that would just make all these close-up engagements so much easier and give you the chance for even nastier multi-kills and whatnot. Good uh, use of Promethean Vision trying to see who shot me from the back. Again, scatter shot is still on the floor, and, and that's a huge mistake, and a lot of people don't think it is, but the power weapons are your advantage in this game especially an objective where there is no uh, ordinance. The power weapons are mandatory. Let me explain what I'd like to see out of that scenario. Instead of you dying and pushing into three folks down the lane, picking up that scatter shot and forcing them to fight right in this little nook, right in that area. Because then they have to come to you, because you've got the oddball, and you have the power weapon of the scatter shot, which just immediately lets you control the engagement, lets you have the power weapon. That gives you dominance in Halo. Map control and power weapons. I mentioned that in the last video. But overall, good video and uh, good replay. Thank you for submitting it to me. I'll pop off into the bullet points here in a second. I like the use of the BR. I want to let you know that just because everyone is running DMRs does not mean that you have to. I've been running the BRs on small maps and having some decent success with it. It's a good gun, even though it's not, whoa, it doesn't kill as fast as the DMR. No, it doesn't. But you do get that high rate of fire, you do get that feeling of the BR, and sometimes it can really throw your opponent's shot off if they're being jolted uh, again and again and again. A little bit of a maybe host migration, you get the, the best side of that where you spawn in before your opponent does. I love when that happens. I hate when you black screen and then you, you don't end up getting uh, spawned in first. What is the word I'm looking for? Yeah, you get killed. And victory! Like I said, short gameplay. I will see you all in the bullet points where I can talk more. Right on, thank you for the replay. Right off the bat, pretty good BR. I saw great shots there. But there were many circumstances where you didn't clean up opponents that you put into one shot, which in turn gave you many assists, which is still good. But more practice will tighten your shot up further, allowing for more kills, which is always great. I like your use of Promethean Vision. I don't think it's necessary in Oddball or most objective game types. I still prefer Thrust Pack. But as I said, you used PV effectively. Give Thrust Pack a try if you grow tired of PV, but just a suggestion. Do not miss the power weapons or the chances to control the engagement. In my last video, I talked about how map control is determined by controlling the engagement and having the power weapons. When you have those two things together, you dominate. In that last situation where you pushed down the blue tunnel and met three opponents, you could have easily won or controlled that engagement by picking up the scatter shot and waiting for them to come towards you and the oddball in that tight quarters where all those corners were. The scatter shot gives you a huge advantage. But overall, well done. Not a massive amount of critique here. Entertaining replay, solid gameplay, and you're going to be able to refine and master your gameplay over time as you practice and grow. I didn't see any giant red flags for me to just go crazy at critiquing, but remember, don't miss those power weapons, ever. They are huge. I've always been pointing that out in these replay reviews. You can't miss those power weapons. They are game changers. I've watched winning games turn into huge losing games very quickly just by a flip-flop in the power weapons if they're experienced players. So thanks for the replay. I appreciate it. Thank you all for being patient. Patient? <laughs> Let me know if you like the format. It's back to the old reach format. And I will see you in the next video, if it's a replay review or if it's a real video of games and stuff. Have a good Tuesday, everybody. I will talk to you later. Mm, cheers!